Good morning. Welcome in Jesus' name. As we look at the cover of our bulletin this morning, we see the, the passage emphasized and depicted there of, of Jesus being the bread of life. And yes, that's been our theme now. This is the third Sunday that we're discussing this area of the necessity of life being that which we receive, that wisdom which we receive from heaven above. A wisdom which man regards as foolishness, which cannot be found apart from the Lord leading us into that truth through Holy Scripture. It's found only in the Scriptures. And so we turn to the Lord for wisdom from above to receive that bread of life that nourishes our souls. Let us pray. Lord, open thou my heart to hear, and through thy word to me draw near. Let me thy word e'er pure retain. Let me thy child and heir remain. Thy word doth deeply move the heart. Thy word doth perfect health impart. Thy word my soul with joy doth bless. Thy word brings peace and happiness. Amen. And so with that thought, we open with the hymn 296, Speak, O Lord, thy servant heareth.
please follow the order of service as printed in our service bulletin. We worship in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God is light, and in him is no darkness at all. If we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, his Son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Together, let us pray. Almighty God, merciful Father, we are sinful by nature and have sinned against you in our thoughts, words, and actions. But we are sorry for our transgressions and pray you of your bountiful mercy to be gracious and merciful unto us. Forgive us for Jesus' sake. Renew us by your Spirit and lead us in the way everlasting. Amen. Jesus Christ is the atoning sacrifice for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. We are forgiven. With boldness and confidence, we may approach the throne to find grace to help in time of need. In the peace of forgiveness, let us praise the Lord. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Gracious Father, your blessed Son came down from heaven to be the true bread that gives life to the world. Grant that Christ, the bread of life, may live in us and we in him, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. In our Old Testament lesson, drawn from the book of Proverbs, the wisdom of Solomon, we actually find Solomon directing us to the wisdom of God, wisdom personified in the person of God and his son, Jesus Christ, how God has laid out the way of life for us. We read from the book of Proverbs, the ninth chapter, beginning with the first verse. Wisdom has built her house. She has hewn out her seven pillars. She has slaughtered her meat. She has mixed her wine. She has also furnished her table. She has sent out her maidens. She cries out from the highest places of the city. Whoever is simple, let him turn in here. As for him who lacks understanding, she says to him, Come, eat of my bread and drink of the wine I have mixed. Forsake foolishness and live and go in the way of understanding. Blessed are they that hear the word of God and keep it. Amen. It's a lesson the Apostle Paul also directs us towards that wisdom from above, not coming from our own understanding, but from God. We read Paul's first letter to the Corinthians. are mature, yet not the wisdom of this age, nor the rulers of this age who are coming to nothing. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the ages, which none of the rulers of this age knew, for if they had known, they would not have crucified the Lord of
ministered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. But God has revealed them to us through his Spirit. For the Spirit searches all things, yes, the deep things of God. For what man knows the things of a man except the Spirit of the man which is in him? Even so, no one knows the things of God except the Spirit of God. Now, we have received not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit who is from God, that we might know the things that have been freely given to us by God. Here ends our lesson. We profess our Christian faith with the whole Christian church on earth. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We continue with hymn number 245, God loved the world so that he gave.
grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. The text for our sermon meditation this morning is found recorded in John's Gospel. We read in the sixth chapter beginning with the 41st verse. The Jews then complained about him because he said, I am the bread which came down from heaven. And they said, Is not this Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How is it then that he says, I have come down from heaven? Jesus therefore answered and said to them, Do not murmur among yourselves. No one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws him, and I will raise him up at the last day. It is written in the prophets, and they shall all be taught by God. Therefore, everyone who has heard and learned from the Father comes to me. Not that anyone has seen the Father except he who is from God. He has seen the Father. Most assuredly, I say to you, he who believes in me has everlasting life. I am the bread of life. Your fathers ate the manna in the wilderness and are dead. This is the bread which comes down from heaven that one may eat of it and not die. I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. And the bread that I shall give is my flesh, which I shall give for the life of the world. This is the word of God. Sanctify us, O Lord, through your truth. Your word is truth. Amen. In Christ Jesus, God, our Savior, your fellow redeemed. Pursuing the necessities of life. That's what we work for, isn't it? We need to put food on the table and a roof over our head. Wouldn't it be nice if it was all just there for us and we didn't have to face the challenges of life to secure these things? A lot of people think the solution for that is, oh, if only I could win the lottery, then, then all their problems would go away. I guess it's just human nature to be focused on the daily necessities of this life. They take a lot of our time, our attention, and our energy. For the past couple of Sundays now, we've been reading from John chapter 6. We read of the miracle of the feeding of the 5,000. We read how following that miracle, the people wanted to take Jesus by force and make him king so that he could provide bread for them every day without them needing to go to work. Jesus then turned the discussion away from, from needing bread for the body to the food we need for the soul. And that bread, which came down from heaven, Jesus boldly stated for all the people to hear that he had come down from heaven and that he was the bread of life. And this is the lesson the Holy Spirit would impress upon our hearts today as we learn of Jesus, the bread that gives life, truly gives life. There is a brand of bread that you can find in the refrigerated section, actually, in the grocery store called Ezekiel bread. They state that their ingredients, their recipe for bread, comes right out of the Bible, from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. They want you to believe that, that because of this, their brand of bread is better for you, more beneficial, and worth the higher price that you have to pay for it. While Ezekiel bread may indeed be wholesome and nutritious, there's a far, 
superior bread whose ingredients are actually found in Holy Scripture and only in Holy Scripture. This is the bread that with genuine heavenly ingredients. This event described in our text is a major turning point in, in Jesus' public ministry. The opening verses of, of our text capture the moment, capturing the attitude of the crowd and how it's turning. The Jews then complained about him because he said, I am the bread which came down from heaven. And they said, is this not Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How is it then that he says, I have come down from heaven? Up to this point in time, great crowds had gathered around Jesus. Just the day before, just the day before, a large multitude had chased around the north end of the Sea of Galilee to get to the place where Jesus was going to land in the boat that he was in with his, his disciples. There were over 5,000 people coming to Jesus as they got out of the boat. People whom Jesus taught, many whom Jesus healed of their sicknesses, and finally whom Jesus fed with five loaves and two small fish. The people had seen what they had wanted, an earthly Messiah who would make this life so much better, make this life a life of ease and security. Indeed, they were thinking of making Jesus a king by force. But Jesus would have none of that. Having once again crossed the Sea of Galilee, the crowds pursued him yet again. This time, thinking about it, demanding an even greater sign. They wanted Jesus to provide bread for everyone, each and every day. That sounded so good. They told him, then we'll believe that you're the one, we'll believe that you're the Messiah. If he was that, it would be a very shallow salvation. Jesus presented himself as the bread from heaven, which they needed far more than bread for their stomachs. He was making the point that he came down from heaven and that he was the Messiah, a Messiah of a different nature than they desired. Rejection was immediate. The people focused on Jesus' family. Many of them were familiar with Mary and Joseph. Many in this crowd had come from the area of, of Nazareth and Capernaum, probably had hired Joseph on a time or two to do some work for them. They knew Jesus' brothers and sisters. They saw Jesus as being one of them. Not someone come down from heaven. Their thoughts and desires and goals, both temporal and spiritual, were, were tied to this earth. They ridiculed Jesus' teaching that he came down from heaven. They didn't want Jesus to be that kind of bread, bread from heaven. You see, they cared very little about spiritual bread. They wanted Jesus to give them Real bread, bread they could sink their teeth into, bread they could eat. They wanted bread with earthly ingredients, grain ground into flour, mixed with water and yeast, bread that could fill their bellies. What good was other stuff? Jesus' response was direct, holding out to them the wonder of the true bread that was of heavenly ingredients. Jesus therefore answered and said to them, Do not murmur among yourselves. No one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws him, and I will raise him up at the last day. It is written in the prophets, and they shall all be taught by God. 
Therefore, everyone who has heard and learned from the Father comes to me. Not that anyone has seen the Father except he who is from God. He has seen the Father. They were pushing Jesus away. Jesus was warning them against this. He made it clear that while they could push away the truth about Jesus, it was not something that they could discover or come to on their own. This bread with ingredients from heaven comes to us from God. God the Father. No one can come to Jesus on their own. The gospel is foolishness to the unbeliever. By nature, we are all blind trapped in spiritual darkness. Luther laid out this truth for us in his explanation of the third article of the Apostles' Creed. God, the Holy Spirit, calls us by the gospel and enlightens us with his gifts. It is as Jesus says here, we are drawn to Jesus, drawn to faith by the Father and the truth which he sends down from heaven. Jesus substantiates this claim by, by quoting the prophet Isaiah that they would all be taught by God. And as Jesus stood before them, this prophecy was being fulfilled. He was declaring the truth from God. He was declaring the truth that saves, that he is the bread of life that has come down from heaven. And they needed that food which would fill, feed their souls. Jesus was and is the one and only way for them or anyone to come to God and be saved. It's still true that people are drawn away from the truth by their own desires, by their perception that that the needs or the desires of this body and life are more pressing and more important than the needs of the soul. It really comes down to the difference in that perception, doesn't it? Between the feeling of urgency on the one hand, I need this and I need this today, and, and the knowing of what is really important on the other hand. The things of this life press upon our consciousness and we chase after the bread that is inferior, made of actually relatively poor ingredients. This is true not only for the body but also for the soul. People chase after spiritual food made of poor ingredients as well. Spiritual junk food of this world has permeated our society. It has even found its way into the church. Programs are deemed more fulfilling than doctrine. Science, with its false theories about the origin of the universe, has supplanted the truth of God's creation. With that, the glory of God and his gospel is diminished in people's eyes because sin has been downplayed and denied. Death is no longer the curse of the law, but a process of this world going on. Sin is finally even celebrated. Even Lutheran ministers who are supposed to be ministers of the gospel lead protests for abortion rights and gay pride parades. Yes, it's happening yet today that people push Jesus away, thinking of him as just another man, that carpenter from Nazareth, whose mother was Mary, whose father was Joseph, who was claiming to be something more than he really was. Jesus is, not was, but is who he said. Jesus is the bread of life. 
When we hear him, we are being taught by God. Jesus is the bread with, with eternal benefits, eternal heavenly benefits. So many who doubt God and push the Lord away do so with, with earthly arguments, flawed, severely flawed earthly arguments. They may argue that if there was a God in heaven, he wouldn't allow evil in this world. And, and Christians who hear these arguments say, oh, I don't know how to answer that. They would make the Lord responsible for evil. They would make the Lord responsible for suffering. Instead of man and the devil, they would rather have God being a fierce judge who would destroy all those who they, in their superior moral character, deem to be the bad people out in the world, worthy of destruction. This, of course, includes those who they... Who who see the evil only in others and not in themselves. They fail to see that, that the God that they desire, the God who would crush the evil of this world, would be a God who would strike them down just as fast as others. For we all sin. At the same time, they would like to make of Jesus a license to sin, to sin, well, only those sins that appeal to them, that they see as being nice and, 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 and expressions of fleshly love. By this, they make a mockery of the cross of Christ, a mockery of his sacrifice for sin. They fail to see the true God. They fail to see that the true God is a God of grace who does not desire the death of the wicked, but that they turn from their evil way, that they turn from their evil way and be forgiven and live. They fail to comprehend that the Lord is not willing that any should perish, any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Repentance turning away from sin and seeing in Jesus the grace and the forgiveness of God. They fail to see that God would have them come to the knowledge of the truth. In the greatness of his love for a fallen and lost world, God gave his only begotten Son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Life is more than just these few short days we have while walking here on the face of the earth. A temporal life that is supported by, by physical bread made from wheat or other grains. And yes, the Lord provides that bread also. But the benefits of that bread are short term. Jesus pointed out that indeed God did miraculously provide manna for heaven for all the people of the nation of Israel for 40 years as they wandered in the wilderness. However, those who ate that bread died. It sustained them for a time in this life, but it did not provide the necessary nourishment for eternal life. Jesus is the bread of life. The benefit that comes from consuming, not with our mouths, but with our hearts, is that we gain the nourishment we need for eternal life. And yes, we have this life now, already. Jesus told his dear friend, Martha, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he may die, shall live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Already now, the Lord has called you to life. He brings life to our cold and dead hearts, calling us to life and faith in God. However, the promise remains 
that we shall never die. And though we may die, we shall live. It boggles our minds because this is a spiritual truth. You see, our spirits will live with God in heaven until Jesus' promise is fulfilled. The absolute clear promise presented to us in our text this morning. I will raise him up at the last day. How dare Jesus make such a claim? He does so on the basis of his redemptive sacrifice and his own resurrection to everlasting life. Even as death came into the world by one man, Adam. And so death passed upon all men for all have sinned. So by the one man, our Lord Jesus Christ, life has been secured. Jesus offered himself as the perfect and complete sacrifice for sin, for the sin of the whole world. He suffered death in our place, not only temporal death, but that death which is in essence being accursed by God. Jesus died and was buried, and going before us into the grave, he rose again on the third day. He shows us the reality of resurrection. You see, he received authority from God the Father to lay down his life for us. And he received authority from God the Father to take up his life again so that we might know the peace of sins forgiven, that we might know that we too shall rise. Jesus gave his life for the life of the world. Jesus must be listed as the ultimate necessity for life. However, more people are inclined to place Jesus fairly low on that list of necessities that they have written in their minds. You see, we're inclined by our human nature to think of the material blessings that come to us from God as being our most pressing needs. May these precious words of truth presented to us by Jesus this morning remind us that the one thing needful is that bread of life which came down from heaven. We must feed our souls upon that bread which alone grants us eternal life. Amen. Now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. We close with the third verse of hymn 48. Please be seated. A um, couple of things I'd like to, to share with you uh, today. Um, on the back page, uh, St. Paul's Lutheran Church in Melrose, Wisconsin. Um, Melrose is a small town. They have a beautiful little church there, a small congregation, in a lot of ways like ours. Very few children. They only have, had a couple children at vacation Bible school from the congregation, four from the, from the community. But on the last day, they, they, did, they did a chalk art project on the sidewalk leading up to the front door of church. And, and I wanted to share that with you. Isn't that awesome? Uh, and look at the age of the children there. You know, it's, a couple of them are pretty small, and, and the children did that. Um, it, it, got, it got in the local newspaper even, so um, it, and they did a little write up on the church. But yeah, it, it's in a lot of ways, I, I see a parallel between us and them. Not many children at present in their congregation, a beautiful church building with a few people going to church there right now, but, um, but that's the spirit at work, enriching the hearts of the people there. Okay, the second thing to bring to your attention. Um, this is the, the um, evangelical heritage version of the Bible that I was talking about and that we've been kind of um, referencing in Bible class for a couple of years. So when I read a passage and uh, I ask someone to read, um, to, to read from this one the same passage so we can hear it with a little different twist on the English translation. Um, and so I... Uh, we had an opportunity to purchase some of these if we bought them by the case uh, at, a, at a really good discount. So um, they're available for you for $17. That's $14 plus $3 for shipping. Books are expensive to ship. Uh, so and you, if you're interested in looking at one and seeing how they are, they're, they're in the fellowship hall. And if you do take one home, please write down your name and, and uh, how many Bibles you're taking with you. Um, I think it, it's, a, it's a, a translation in very readable American English that I think you would find uh, a, a, a great blessing for you to, uh, to own and have um, for, your, for your own devotions. Um, is there something else? Next Sunday we have worship at our regular time. Uh, it's Labor Day weekend already, right? Next weekend? Summer's gone, and that means two weeks from today we'll be starting our Bible class following 
um, church again at that time. The peace of the Lord be with you all. Thank you.